speaking of Dave Rubin, Dave is back from Israel, which I've been told is at war with Hamas. So it must have been very dangerous for him to go to Israel right now. I mean, you know, when you're looking at the civilian death tolls, they've got to be creeping up on both sides, right? In this symmetrical war. Well, I'm being sarcastic. Obviously, it's a genocide and we understand that. So yeah. uh, sorry, just to butt in on that um, before we get to this clip. I mean, again, like I, I talk with Ben Case, uh, um, uh, who uh, left reckoning about the objective criteria for this going back to the what is the correlates of war database is that this is a colonial massacre just by the amount of um, uh, uh, casualties that uh, each side is able to take mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So objectively, not a war, a colonial massacre. And it's instructive, too, because the definition of genocide, you know, that came through the creation of the United Nations in response um, to the Holocaust. And uh, there have been multiple definitions of, you know, fascism, and this is insufficient to a degree, but it does point out a certain truth, which is that fascism is colonialism or imperialism turned inward, right? Like the, gen the, the genocide of, of the Jews in the Holocaust is as unimaginably horrific as any crime could possibly be. Um, but that our cultural memory kind of only talks about that genocide versus the other ones that have been perpetrated on the rest of the world is notable because those are more conveniently a part of the construction of the West. So they were seen as necessary genocides to create the society that we do today of extraction of the global South. And Israel's genocide of the Palestinians is very much in keeping of that with that. So we just really do not have, um, consistency on this to any degree and i think that that's obviously a bit of an understatement um but candace owens despite her past history of anti-semitism or i guess you know let's call it ongoing ongoing anti-semitism um she stumbled upon calling it a genocide here which is the correct opinion even if she comes at it from a horrible place i mean and ben shapiro didn't fire her when she was defending kanye saying i love hitler over and over he's now fired her because she doesn't support israel yeah and to be clear she said it would be bad for any country to do a genocide she didn't even really say israel is doing a genocide she's just like genocide count me out and of course ben shapiro and dave rubin got really insecure about that because israel is doing a genocide so i mean dave is now trying to find his new toehold back into the conservative media space because he hooked his wagon to Ron DeSantis. That failed miserably. He can no longer pretend to be a liberal that's just disaffected from the left. Um, he's just now, now conservative at this point. And so how does he get back into the good graces of Ben Shapiro, who says basically that he's living in sin and would not ever want to go to his wedding or be a part of his life as a gay man married to a man? Well, they're going to connect over being Zionists. And this is them discussing Candace Owens leaving the Daily Wire. Dave is just almost crying tears of joy to be back in the spotlight and in the warm glow of Ben Shapiro and all of his money once again. All right, so let's do the elephant in the room for just a moment because I saw you this week on Piers Morgan. He asked you repeatedly about Candace. Uh, you repeatedly basically said, I won't talk about don't that. Want yeah, to talk I'll about say that here too. I, I, yeah, <laughs> and that's fine. And, and you know, it's interesting because we all sort of came up together to different extents and we've all done a million things together in public events and networks and all those things. We're friends. It seems to me that at this moment, she's now a free agent. She happened to end up on Locals, where, which I created, and we they were a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. All right, pause it. Can you at least talk? Buddy, it's gratuitous. Like, we're all the same. I mean, I can, I, I can tell you this. I have friends that casually pay attention to politics. And, you know, they know who Ben Shapiro is. They know who Candace Owens is. No one knows who the hell Dave Rubin is, for the no, most part. Buddy. Like, yeah. unless you're watching our show because we find him so amusingly stupid. Um, you are not peers here. <laughs> you are not peers. But you can see kind of what he's trying to do here. It's not subtle, buddy. Um, inserting himself. It's, it's like we're like the three amigos that came up together. We, we're a platform, not a publisher that you guys are. Can you at least talk to just sort of 
just sort of where it's at now. She's not with you. She's free. She's and, free to do whatever and, she wants to do and to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like the Daily One. Uh, kind of like Gina Carano. <laughs> anyway, continue. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> she wants to do and it to be wherever she wants to be. And the difference between a publisher like the Daily Wire and a platform like Locals is obviously that a platform should have a very broad range of speech that it allows, including speech that maybe even the creators don't believe is inside what they would consider to be the Overton window. That's a very different thing than direct subsidization of particular opinions. So the Daily Wire would not have a host, would not pay a host who was staunchly pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. They'd have no obligation to be a host who is staunchly pro-abortion. And so when it comes to the hosts on The Daily Wire, obviously everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes to me and says, you can't say X, nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the reality is that there is an Overton window at The Daily Wire. Obviously there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Uh, and you know, a, a lot of this has happened publicly. Uh, and then, but, you know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher, that means that there is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that host saying I don't wish to work here anymore because again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Does, uh, does it surprise you that so, so many All right, let's pause just to, to, to digest what he just said there. So I think that that's a perfectly fair assertion to make um i don't think the majority report would hire anybody who was like a zionist or who were uh was uh, anti-abortion or who like believed in cutting taxes for the rich or something like that i mean that would be outside of the bounds of what our program would want to feature what any liberal program would probably want to uh, well leftist program would want to feature um i think that that's totally acceptable but he's betraying the truth here, which is that what I just said, within the Overton window, within what was acceptable in the Daily Wire, were Candace Owens's defensive comments of Kanye saying, I love Hitler over and over again. Yep. That was acceptable. When Candace went and gave a talk and said that the problem with Hitler was that he was expansionist as opposed to keeping it within the borders of Germany. That was the real problem with him. That was within the bounds of what Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire thought was acceptable. But when it comes to Israel, when it comes to actually challenging the, what they like to call the deep state, real government imperial power, what is actually power in America, in the world, US empire, that is really challenging power. That's when she gets ousted. So she can be as anti-Semitic as she wants and be a Holocaust revisionist about the true nature of what really was horrible about what, about what Hitler was doing. It wasn't that he was going into, you know, Poland. I mean, that was horrific as well. But it was the extermination of people. It yeah. was the concentration camps. And you know what? They, they, they didn't mind that uh, she was defending Kanye because Kanye previously said slavery was a choice and they loved that sort of shit. So, like, yeah, exactly. Like, this, this sort of stuff. And it's not just that. She also um, played dumb about... And I, I don't believe Kyrie is an anti-Semite to the extent... I think he's... The extent Kanye is right, um, but Candace was also willing to launder that and gain the attention from that, and that sort of stuff didn't um, didn't bother them nearly as much as her saying, "Hey, it would be bad, and I wouldn't support it if there's a genocide, and I don't like that kids are being killed." Yeah. <laughs> generally speaking, and yeah, Dave and, and both these guys got really anxious about that, and it is because they support the uh, genocide that Israel is currently conducting. And I think Candace should, like, I, I think she's not, um, I, I don't know, like, I, 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 I think she's not, I think she's going in a really weird direction with this, like, the Rabbi Shmuley pivot um, is, I think, cynical, like, there's a way to not really criticize uh, Israel, mm -hmm. um, it's to make it about Rabbi Shmuley and how weird he is and how his daughter's a witch, because I think she still wants to work for maybe, I don't know, Glenn Beck or some of these organizations that doesn't want to actually um, sign up for a uh, anti-Zionist um, uh, person uh, uh, themselves. But. Well, I mean, don't, like, yeah, right, exactly, don't expect anything from Candace Owens, right? Right. What her ousting just, it's more instructive about what it means and like what 
what the Daily Wire thinks is acceptable and what they don't think is. And and challenging actually like American might, challenging empire, challenging imperialism, challenging racism <laughs> is that is where they draw the line. Keep going. Yeah. I want to hear what uh, Dave has to say to that. People even on our side of this are confused about that as it relates to free speech and quote unquote cancel culture, like severing the business tie. As long as you're not throwing someone in jail and they're able to be everywhere else. Again, Gina Carano. Uh, I'm not super surprised at the controversy, yeah. honestly, because to, to a certain extent, I think that there's been a, a reaction on the right to the excesses of the left. So because what the left did is they said that the oh, Overton the window problem. ought to be closed so tight that no one can get inside the Overton window. Basically, if you're to the right of Hillary Clinton, you can't be allowed inside Welcome the Overton window. World, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and not just with regard Pause to it. platforms. Who do they accept to the left of Hillary Clinton? Go ahead, Brett. So with regard to publishers. So, for example, this week, NBC News deciding that Rana McDaniel was too much for them. Rana right. McDaniel can't work at NBC News. The sacred halls of NBC News must not be sullied by the former head of the RNC. Jen Psaki, however, can have a show on MSNBC, despite being the press secretary for the White House five seconds ago. Right? The, the, the right sure. response to that is, I think, correct to say you guys have shut the Overton window too tight. But I think some elements of the right have basically Positive, said there is no, no Overton like, window. The actually, Overton... I think our critique, maybe I'll speak for you, but I would say, like, don't hire Jen Psaki either. Oh, actually, close absolutely. that window up from paid propagandists. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, well, we also, I mean, uh, oh, 100%. I have no criticism for me on not hiring Jen Psaki on episode. We criticized it at the time. We thought it was ridiculous. The turnaround was absurd. Um I, I mean, has he said anything about Kaylee McEnany getting hired by Fox yeah, News? Right. So I guess that's not really on the on the docket. But um, and she and not and she's not like a backbencher on Fox. Like she's a she's a panelist every day on Outnumbered. She fills in for Sean Hannity at times. But he's she's being critical front of the center. left, right? Yeah. It's just that both of these two channels they do it too. I mean, CNN does it too. I would love to not have like actually CIA people. Who yeah, right, right. Are paid to be disinformation <laughs> agents. Um, Who've literally on, lied to uh, the Senate before. <laughs> right, that would be my preference too. So if we want stricter sta- standards, I'm all with Ben Shapiro. Close for, that Overton window up. Close it. Okay, close that Overton window. It's but, a little bit drastic. Close it up, here. just but, like my wife's vagina. <laughs> But that's where that's where the content moderation issue becomes a problem for Shapiro is that if we grant him the premise that we also would not want someone like Saki on that network or a bunch of the spooks that are on MSNBC all the time. He what what then becomes his his argument that what he's doing is somehow more principled than what the so-called other side is doing. Yeah, right. Window too tight. But I think some elements of the right have basically said there is no Overton window. The Overton window should be completely exploded with regard not just to platforms, with which I kind of agree, but with regard to publishers. So NBC News not only has an obligation to hire Rana McDaniel, NBC News has the obligation to hire Alex Jones, for example. Right. Uh, which I, I don't which think just that's makes true. no sense at a business level beyond beyond free speech. I mean, there's a reason that networks exist. Yeah, it, it they have, editor- they have editorial yeah. positions. Yeah. Daily Wire has a very strong editorial position on a wide variety of, of issues. Israel. And by the way, I should say that you know there are a lot of people who are suggesting this is about disagreements over Israel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can safely say it is not about disagreements over Israel to it's the extent about- that without reference to Candace at all here, Matt Walsh has taken the position that America ought not be involved in the Middle East at all. Matt Walsh's position, so far as all right, I understand Matt it, Walsh didn't say the word genocide, Ben. Yeah, and Matt Walsh also, uh, yeah, right, hasn't been, uh, didn't say the word genocide. He's also a fundamentalist Christian. Um, so he, I haven't seen anything from Matt Walsh specific, and maybe we could look it up, to calling out Israel no. right now. Um, he can broadly say, I don't think we should intervene in the Middle East, but I don't really know if that's not the emphasis of the coverage, yeah. then I don't really care. Um, well, it's so ridiculous. Like he's an isolationist. So therefore like that, that is, that is such a preposterous. And he's self-conscious because that is the reason she was. Fired. Of course it and, is. And, and it's just like, Oh, so, okay. You can make, this is where the buck stopped. I mean, she can make a series of outrageous statements. She can be as racist and as, and as, inflammatory as she as she wants to be and specifically because she was a useful tool for them as someone who's both a woman and a black woman saying incredibly racist things about other people that they like get a little kick out of that they feel like they can't necessarily say that's the yeah. that's that's what she served for them but then hey you can put you can do all you want to do here 
But if you cross this particular line, that's where we will make an example out of you or, or, or get rid of you because we can't justify this anymore. It's, it's, it's really instructive, I think, in when you look at like right wing media and what they're actually putting out there versus how they present. And it's dark the direction it's going because you have the Nick Fuentes crew who is um, explicitly anti-Semitic uh, that is going to be flooding the zone with all this uh, say Christ is king mm-hmm. sort of uh, trolling. Uh, we're we're going to see an ugly rift uh, and genuine uh, I think rise of anti-Semitism on the right here uh, in response to the way that they are Ben Shapiro, I think, um, responses uh, anybody is, is cynically deploying this stuff and also caping for racists. Uh, and um, what, what's this? This, this is, is like, Matt Walsh. This is from like a few days ago. This is like literally the only thing I've ever seen him say about Israel. Um, Matt Walsh saying, I rarely ever talk about Israel. And when I do, it's only to say that they should be left to sort out their own problems without our money or involvement. If that counts as shilling for Israel, then uh, the phrase apparently has no meaning. Um, Whatever. Yeah, sure. So it's just like That's, like passive a- isolationist language. I don't give a crap about how many Gal- Gazans they massacre i mean which is a convenient cop-out for shapiro to mention as being like we have ideological diversity no you don't no you don't that mean that is me- just, that's he, he, meaningless that's saying i don't care about it so i don't know anything right, about it right well but which i also don't man. believe which i also don't believe yeah. like no the problem is like israel palestine is something that is going to cost america we broke it uh we we, we bought it we'd have to c- uh, contribute to the actual like a peaceful settlement i mean this is very utopian right now is israel like fucking sorry <laughs> Um, Israel's doing what it's doing, um, but to the extent that we have obligations here, it isn't just to wipe our hands of it and let the region to its right. own. Um, we should be leading. We have the biggest military in the world. Frankly, I think we should be uh, um, taking out uh, the IDF's defensive capabilities with it, um, but at very least getting the world to say stop this and also force a peaceful settlement onto a population that doesn't want it and a government that most certainly doesn't want it. Um here we go uh dizzle mcfizzle emma is ruthless and i'm here for it that's why i became a member i mean i would say more i just have foot and mouth syndrome um uh down under davo says as a gay uh that as a gay they i'm surprised david is not better equipped and equipped to service ben's needs talk about ham fisted oh my god um uh, Jonathan Arm said, Emma impersonating Ben Shapiro saying, closing up just like my wife's vagina needs to be a sound drop. Maybe not. I have kind of... I think that's going to be an R.M. Brown uh, soundboard edition, if I had to guess. Yeah. I mean, look, I go, I always go with the anatomical one versus like the, the, the nickname for genitalia. It's just, it's, it's just got to be straightforward with it. Even if, got to cut to the chase. (laughs) Let's cut to the chase here, folks. 